Besides all the COVID-19 restrictions, we should not forget the EU restrictions on PFAS and microplastics. In this part of the June 2020 Camp Connection, we talked to Mark Blaney of ECHA about his latest news on these restrictions. And of course, the COVID-19 situation in Helsinki. Hi Mark, how is ECHA coping with COVID-19? Thank you, Chad, and happy to be with you to discuss some of the restriction issues we've been dealing with in the European Chemicals Agency and how we've been affected by the COVID crisis. Like most of Europe, my colleagues have been home working uh, since mid-March, although now some of my colleagues are returning to the office. Uh, all of our meetings have been carried out remotely, including our committee meetings, uh, including those of the Risk Assessment Committee and the Socioeconomic economic analysis committee uh, and uh, both meetings were held totally virtually in June and they actually went very well. Uh, in addition my colleagues dealing with the biocides regulation have been helping to ensure that disinfectants can get to the market uh, quickly and myself I've been dealing with a number of requests for extensions to ongoing restriction consultations. So this is a, an overview of perhaps some of the issues we've been dealing with related to the COVID crisis. Hopefully COVID-19 is a temporary situation, but some things are forever. Can you provide us with an update in relation to the restrictions for the forever chemicals, like PFAS? Sure. Um, actually, ECHA's committees are discussing a number of PFAS substances at the moment where they've been proposed for restrictions. Uh, SIAC actually adopted in June its final opinion on one PFAS substance. This is perfluorohexane 1-sulfonic acid, or PFHXS. And here SIAC has concluded that the expected benefits and uh, the cost to society are uh, well balanced. Uh, indeed, actually, that the benefits would outweigh the costs, and therefore the restriction is the most appropriate way to address the identified risk to the environment. Uh, both committees, both RAC and SIEC, are also discussing another PFAS substance uh, with a very similar acronym. This is undecafluorohexanoic acid, or PFHXA, and here they are looking to adopt their uh, opinions later in this year. Uh, we've also been asked by the Commission to look at additional derogations actually from the scope of an already proposed and discussed restriction on C9, C14 PFCAs. This is another PFAS. And also to see whether additional derogations are needed uh, because of the um, recent um, decision to include PFOA in the POPs regulation. And uh, these uh, derogations are actually linked. Then in addition, uh, outside of ECHA, Five member states, uh, Germany, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden and Denmark, are considering a much wider restriction on PFAS substances, uh, all the remaining number of substances and all the remaining uses. And uh, this is expected to be developed over the next year. So quite a few activities relating to PFAS that are ongoing. What can industry and other stakeholders do in this process? Okay, so for one of the substances I mentioned, PFHXA, this is currently being discussed in the committees, as I said, and there is an ongoing consultation open until the 25th of September this year. And all stakeholders can submit information into that consultation on both the risk and also the impacts of the proposed uh, restriction. So uh, anyone with such information is warmly welcome to uh, submit this. Then on the additional derogations that I mentioned for C9 to C14 PFCAs, we have a call for evidence that's actually open for another couple of weeks until the 6th of July 2020. And again, any information from stakeholders uh, on risks or impacts uh, because of the uh, proposed new derogations uh, we are well, again welcome uh, until that date. Then the national authorities, the member states that I mentioned, uh, have also a call for evidence open and they're inviting interested parties to send in evidence and information on the use of PFAS substances by the end of July, 31st of July 2020. So these are uh, a number of uh, ways that uh, stakeholders can um, uh, contribute to the process. 
In 2019, ECA proposed restrictions on microplastics. What is the current situation here and what actions do you expect from industry? The ECA committees have been actively discussing these their proposals on the, uh, uh, the original uh, ECA um, um, proposal for a restriction. And uh, actually at their June plenary meeting, uh, RAC adopted its opinion on the uh, proposal and SEAC agreed its draft opinion. And so uh, now the next stage is that a consultation on the SEAC draft opinion will start probably on the 1st of July, and this will be open for 60 days. And again, uh, stakeholders can uh, send in information uh, on uh, this, the uh, SEAC draft opinion on SEAC issues uh, before, that, uh, before 60 days is completed. Uh, these uh, issues that we're particularly interested in uh, are related to um, the way that biodegradable polymers are identified, also information on synthetic infill in sports turf pitches uh, are also uh, in, uh, elements that we uh, are interested in getting further information on. Also, the impacts of uh, proposed uh, restrictions on uses not specifically identified uh, and uh, derogated from the current proposal. We're also interested in information on the impact of the currently proposed transitional periods for substance-based medical devices on the encapsulation of fragrances in detergents and uh, in cosmetic products and other mixtures. And then lastly, uh, any information on the practical implications of uh, the proposed instructions for use and uh, reporting requirements in the proposal. So these are some of the elements uh, that we're very interested in uh, getting more information on during the consultation on the SEAC draft opinion. Thank you, Mark. Very informative. Hopefully all the COVID-19 restrictions can be lifted soon. Stay safe.